Hello everyone. So for today's video, I thought that I would do one that I've had in the works for a long time or that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but I've just never gotten around to it because it's going to be a very in-depth video. I'm going to try and make it a very in-depth video. Today, it's going to be a how I edit my YouTube videos using my iPad Pro. This is what I use to edit everything that you see from my thumbnails to the videos. That's basically it. I have collected some tips throughout the years of using my iPad to edit. I've collected some knowledge that I thought I would share with you guys, because why not? I wanna help people out. So I have a big list of stuff that I need to talk about on here. So also if you see me looking down on my desk, it's because I'm looking at the stuff that I've got on my notes. So don't think that I'm being rude. So without any further ado, let's get started with the video. Okay, so what I first wanted to talk about was everything tech related that I have with YouTube. I just wanted to talk about all of that really quick. To start off with cameras, a little one that I have here to show is the Canon G7X. This is a very popular vlog camera. If you ever see a vlog on my channel or something that looks like I'm like moving around, I will be using this. I will not be using my main camera because that one is big and bulky and I, I don't have the arm strength for that. However, the main camera that I use and the one that you're watching right now is the Canon an ATD. I used to use the Canon 700D, which is still a really good camera. However, the only reasons for the change between the two was that the autofocus on that camera was really quite loud and clunky, and it also was very slow, which obviously that's not like a huge thing you need to be concerned about, but for me, I just really wanted to upgrade my camera, so those were the main reasons for why I did that. when your mum starts a vacuuming check. To go along with cameras, we've also got tripods. I would honestly recommend just going on Amazon and getting the Amazon Basics one because I think it's like 20 pounds or something like that. And I've heard that it's good and it's got pretty good reviews. So I'd recommend that tripod. I also then have to talk about lenses. These are very important for cameras in general. The lens can really affect the quality of your video. So buying a good lens is really important. The lens that I currently have on the Canon 80D is, let me pronounce this right because it's quite a mouthful. The Sigma 30mm 1.4 art lens. This is like the basic, I want to call it lens, because it's the lens that a lot of the famous YouTubers use to get the blurry background. If you want to have the blurry background, you need to have a camera with the low or the high aperture. So like my, this camera goes to 1.4. So like the smaller the number, the blurrier the background. I learned that in photography. I also have the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter lens. This is very different to this lens here. This lens is very like professional and like blurry and it it's like a very specific looking lens. Whereas this lens is, it's not very expensive. I would recommend this one over that one if you do want like a cheaper lens. But the thing with this lens is that it's so wide. Like the look that it gives is like insane with your lens. I will overlay some clips of when I've used this in YouTube videos, but honestly the way that this camera can go so wide. Actually a bit scary. Then we also have got audio, which is another important part of YouTube videos. Audio is something that can very much make or break the video. I use the Rode VideoMic Go, which is I think one of the cheapest microphones you can get. And honestly, it's so easy. You just plug it into the camera and it does it. I also use an extension wire, which you might be like, what is that? Basically, I have a wire that goes from the camera and it's six meters long and it runs all the way from the camera to the microphone microphone and so it means that the microphone is actually here on the floor or on my desk instead of being on top of the camera which basically means that like the audio is closer to me which gives it like a better sound. Another form of audio that I've got is a microphone for when I do voiceovers. This is the Yuhuru portable USB microphone. This was actually kindly sent to me by the company um, but it is a really good microphone for voiceovers or if you want to do a podcast. When did I start revision? That wasn't the question. When should you start revision? Um, well, I personally started. The final thing would also quickly be the lighting. Lighting is very important and my natural lighting is right here and it just doesn't work with the background. It doesn't look that nice. So I just have a soft box, which I bought on Amazon for like 30 pounds and it works a treat. So that is everything in relations to my equipment. I just thought I'd give you a little run through of everything I used in case you were curious. Next up is planning my YouTube videos. Planning is actually something that is very important to being a YouTuber because the way in which you plan your videos can really change the way that the final product comes out. To plan my YouTube videos, I use my iPad. This is an example of the plan for this video, which I am referring to currently. I will easily use my iPad or I will just use my phone. I just either use the notes app on there 
on here. Now is the part that is quite important, it's going to be the editing, because my editing has evolved quite a lot along the years. I've kind of grown with new tips and stuff that I've learned along the way, which I now implement into my YouTube videos, so I wanna make sure that you use them in yours. Step one of editing, the rough cut. This is where you go in, import all your footage, just go and chop it all up, just make sure that you get rid of all the ums, all the ahs, all the bit where you pause, just anywhere, and you kind of like look a bit out of it. Delete it, get rid of it, you don't want your video to be like that. You want your video to be as to the point as possible. You don't want to have loads of rambling. You just want to have the important bits of information so that the viewer is engaged. I then will go in and do all the zooms, zoom in, zooms out. I will then go on and do that along the copy of the video. I will quickly show you guys how I do the zoom ins and zooms outs on LumaFusion. Okay, so to do a basic zoom, you literally just double tap and pinch. It's very simple. And then to do the chem burns or like transition effect, you just click size and position. And then as you see on the screen, you just do that. That's quite hard to explain. And then the next step for the rough cut is I will just go in and add all the text. Here on the screen, I will put all of my favorite like text that I can use in my videos. Then the step two is where I will just watch that whole video through, make sure everything's okay. If there's anything where I look a bit out of place, get rid of it. We don't need that negative energy. Then the next part will be that I go in and pick music, which is something that is very important to a YouTube video. So the site that I use for my music is Thematic. It's a free program. You just have to give your email and sign up and then you can use all of their music for free. I normally just type in words like chill or lo-fi. I want my music to be as like chill and calm as possible. You can also go on YouTube channels and type up like copyright free music. There are channels that just upload copyright free stuff if you want to use that. Then step three, um, this is where I will go in in the editing and do doodles, which is something that is quite new to me or ever since I've had this iPad, I've kind of been learning over time how to do doodles on my iPad. This trend of doodling on your screen was very much popularized by Best Dressed. She's known as that on YouTube or her name's Ashley. She has a very specific editing style that I really do take inspiration from and so the doodle style is definitely like her thing. So to do the doodles that is a tongue twister. I use the app Procreate. This is an app that you can buy on the app store for I think around £10. It was a very expensive app for me to buy at the time. I will open up like a screen size and just start doing the doodles. I use the um, pencil tools because it gives off like the sort of look that I like. So I will just pick a pencil. I will change the size of the tool, the opacity. I will kind of just play around with it. Then I will just go into the color bar and pick a color. I kind of want to do like a muted color most times because that's the vibe. Then I would just doodle whatever I want to doodle. Say for example, I will put some stars on the screen now. I will then get my tool, my pencil, and just draw the stars on the screen. Then what I will do is I will open a second layer and then I will draw the stars on top of the stars that are already there which I know is a confusing concept. But basically in doing that, what you've done is you've created two layers of the same stars, but they are in slightly separate places so that then when you put them into your editing software, they like jiggle a little bit. And then I will save one of the star layers and then I will save the second star layer and then I just have two separate star layers in my iPad. And then what I will do is I will open Procreate and then I'll put those little stars in. It will shorten them down to like 0.5 of a second. So then when I play them, it looks like they're like vibrating quickly. And that's how you do the doodles. So the final step in my editing process would be the filters and the exporting of the video, which is very important to changing the overall look of my videos. So to do this, I use the app Visco or VSCO, however you want to call it. What I will do is I will save my video on my iPad pad I will just save it and then airdrop it over to my phone because I will then edit the video in Visco on my phone. I do pay for the monthly um, subscription or it's like yearly. I think you pay like £20 a year which for me is so worth it because I literally use it like every week and I also use it for all my Instagram. So what I do is I will just import the video into Visco and then I will go into the filter section. That's what I do first. The filters that I'm liking at the moment or the main filter that I'm just using every video is G8. However, I will only put that on like two or three because I don't want it to be super overpowering on the video. Then what I will do is I will go into the tool and I will use the exposure, the contrast and the saturation to slightly adjust the video. I normally turn up the exposure, I turn down the contrast and then I up the saturation slightly which just gives like a nice 
look to my videos. And then the final thing that I'm going to talk about today and the final thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how I make my thumbnails. So what I will do is I will always just do like a separate little video at the end or I'll do like a 10 second part at the end of the video where I just like pose <laughs> and screenshot the poses for the thumbnail. So I would just take a few different screenshots and pick a few different options for the video and then I will add filter to the photo and kind of change the exposure and all that to just make them look as nice as possible. Then I will open the app Fonto and this is the app that I use to put the actual text on my thumbnails. My favourite text that I'm using at the moment is called Marola I think. It's like this weird sort of unique font which I quite like to use in my videos so I will just use that font. Go into Procreate and just add a few little doodles to kind of show that I've got a little bit of a fun quirkiness about me. <laughs> I then just export the thumbnail and that is it. So that is basically all I do for my videos. I know that it's not super crazy the way in which I edit. Um, I've improved over the years at making myself a lot more efficient in how I edit. The process of filming, editing, uploading, all of that, it probably takes me all in all for a video about five or six hours, probably about six hours, but it can be more depending on the editing of the video. So I think you need to bear in mind if you want to become a YouTuber that it is very time consuming. It takes a lot of time if you want to be a YouTuber, but honestly, it's just a hobby of mine that I love to do and I think I'm all right at it. So I like it. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it a bit informative. If you have any questions that you want me to answer or if you're a bit unsure about something that I spoke about, you can always leave them in the comments and I will reply to you as quick as I can. But I hope that you all have a really good day and a really good week. And I hope that I see you all in my next video. Bye.